Today we are taking a look at Viltrox's new lens, the 56mm f1.7. A little bit of a context before we begin, last year Viltrox also sent me this uh, beautiful lens. This is the Viltrox 13mm f1.4. I did a review about this lens on my channel, you can go check it out, links up in the corner here if you're interested. But uh, fast forward to 2024. Viltrox yet again reached out and said, hey, do you want to do a review of this 56 millimeter? And I was like, hmm, I already own a Fujifilm 56 f1.2. Do I really need another 56 millimeter lens? But because they did such a good job with the 13 millimeter f1.4 and I got to see firsthand the quality of the lens, I was like, you know what? Might as well, right? Viltrox has done good by me, and so I'm um, here I am doing another review for them. No money was exchanged. Um, I'm just doing a quick review for this lens. Now, before we begin with the review, I just want to set the precedence a little bit for what's to come. We're gonna talk about the price first, before anything else. So the price of this 56 f1.7 is 139 USD and that is roughly 215 Australian dollars because I live in Australia it's just good to know that's very cheap that is very very cheap now keep those numbers in mind because for the rest of the review it plays a lot in into everything that I say and and you need to have that kind of mindset when going into a review like this. Let's go over the pros and cons of the 56 f1.7. We'll begin with the cons. Now the biggest con is that it is cheap. Uh, like I mentioned before, with this kind of price tag, you really got to not have your expectations too high in terms of build quality. This lens is made entirely of plastic, um, aside from the, you know, the optics and the rear housing which is a uh, rear sorry mount which is metal everything else is pretty much plastic brings down the price a lot uh, another thing to expect with this lens tldr is that the optics aren't as good as some of the more expensive options out there but again for the price that is to be expected the other con of this lens is obviously that it's not weather sealed so don't go expecting too much from something at this price point but other than that there's no real cons that i can speak of for this lens now the pros of this lens is that it's cheap well wait how can a con also be a pro let me explain with cheap lenses like this that are made out of plastic there is one real benefit for those type of lenses in that it is very lightweight because of its construction. This lens weighs <laughs> almost nothing, right? So I can imagine that this would be a great lens for you to take around on day trips, uh, when you go traveling and all that stuff, just because it just, it's, it's just so light, you tend to forget about it, right? You just chuck it in your bag. If you need it, you need it. If you don't, it just sits there. It doesn't really add too much more weight. Whereas on the other hand, if you own like say a Fujifilm 56 f1.2, that thing is heavy because it's made of metal. It's got a lot of glass inside that you, you'll, start feel, you'll start to feel that when, when you're carrying it on your camera and also when you're carrying it in your bag. So this has the great benefit of being super lightweight. Another pro of this lens is that it is very compact and very portable. Look at this. I'm holding it in my hand right now. Look how small the dimensions of this lens is freaking tiny. And when I stick it onto my Fujifilm X-T4, you know, it, it doesn't stick out that much. It's not very intrusive, uh, obtrusive. It, it doesn't really get in the way. It just feels really, really good to use. And so that is a major pro for this lens. Now the last pro that I can think of for the 56 1.7 is that the image quality punches above its price tag. The price that you're paying for this lens, I would say you're getting much better image quality. And if I didn't tell you the price at the start, you probably assume that the 
price of this lens would be somewhere along the lines of more like 300, 400 or even 500 dollars. That's a stretch, right? AUD, not USD. USD may be like $300. Now that we've gone over the pros and cons, let's get into the most interesting part of the review, which is the uh, real world user experience. When I review lenses, you know, I'm not super technical. I don't like to focus on, you know, those really specific tests that they do with those sheets and the walls and all that stuff. I base my judgment on a lens off of the images that it produces, the character that it creates, and also the overall user experience, how it feels to have this lens used in the real world. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go outside, touch some grass, and I'm going to show you how this lens performs, both image quality and for video as well. All right, we made it to Marrickville. We're going to go to a tea shop because guess who's here with me today? Yep, Tim. And Tim drinks tea. So we're gonna go to that tea place. I'm gonna use the 56 F1.7 to take some nice kind of lifestyle shots inside the tea place to show you guys how this lens performs in a controlled environment. So we'll see you there. So preliminary verdict on the Viltrox 56mm f1.7. When I was sitting inside the tea house taking photos uh, and video, first of all, video was great. I had the Fujifilm X-T4, so it had inbuilt stabilization, so that helped a lot. Um, so uh, definitely if you have a Fujifilm with stabilization, this lens goes really well with it. Uh, in terms of photo, the Autofocus was quite nice, actually. Even in a darker environment, it still managed to focus pretty well on things. You do need to change the focus settings to single point to get the, the best accuracy. If you put it on zone, sometimes at hunts, it doesn't know what to do. So yeah, both photo and video are pretty solid. For the price that this lens goes at, it actually performs really, really well. Here are a few more images captured with the Viltrox 56 f1.7. I tried to shoot it in a variety of scenarios so you guys can get an idea of how it performs. Um, I tried to shoot it directly into the sunlight just to see how the flaring goes. And as you can see from these images, this is what it looks like directly into the sensor as well. Um, I also did a couple of tests for bokeh. And so you can see at f1.7 and then gradually going, uh, stopping down in the aperture values so yeah Hiltrox 56 f 1.7 guys all right so we're back in the studio and let me just end this video by asking the question who is this lens for now if you're a fujifilm shooter and you own one of those interchangeable x bodies and you don't have an 85 millimeter focal length but you don't want to you know, spend heaps of money and commit to one, you just want to test it out or you just want to have one for the sake of having one, this might be a very good choice. It doesn't take up that much space in your bag. It doesn't take up that much space anywhere, really. The other user that I think would greatly benefit from this lens are the people who travel a lot. Uh, the people who treat photography as a hobby, they travel a lot, they're always on the go and they don't want a super heavy lens to weigh them down, right? They want an assortment of lenses, but they don't want, you know, the weight to, to go along with it. 
And so the 56 F1.7 from Viltrox really kind of fits that bill of a super compact, super lightweight, you know, easy to carry lens. So yeah, if you are on the market and you are considering picking up this lens, I'd say go for it. It's a fantastic cheap lens, 200, again, 139 USD, 215 AUD. And that's a bargain, right? I can't think of any other 56 millimeter or 85 mil focal length lens on the APS-C camera that is as cheap and affordable as this. So thanks for watching guys and until next time.